Ever get that like, oh, no feeling when you open your credit card bill and there's something on there? Like, wait, <laughs> that wasn't me, was it? I'm hopefully not a late fee for forgetting to pay the last one. <laughs> <laughs> no, those are definitely the worst. Yeah. But what we're talking about today is that same kind of feeling, except instead of a credit card, it's your cloud bill that's gone kind of haywire. Yeah, that sinking feeling when the costs of doing business online seem to be spiraling out of control. Exactly. And suddenly you're like, wait, is this normal? Or is something actually wrong? And that, my friend, is where cloud cost anomaly management comes in. And the good news is you don't need to be a tech expert to wrap your head around this. Yeah, this isn't just for the coders out there. Right. Whether you're a small business just starting to explore the cloud or a large company with a whole bunch of systems already running online, keeping those costs in check, it's important for everyone, really. That's essential business 101, right? Absolutely. And just so we're all on the same page, we're not just talking about like any little change in your cloud bill, right? right. We're talking about those, whoa, hold on a minute, moments. Yeah. yeah. Where you see a spike in costs that's so far outside your normal patterns that you know in your gut something's not right. Like way outside. Yeah. Those are the anomalies we're on the hunt for today. Like an alarm bell going off. Ding, ding, ding. Exactly. So to help us navigate this whole world of anomaly management, our sources gave us this really cool framework. Okay. They call it the crawl, walk, run approach. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like leveling up your anomaly management game plan. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Everyone starts at level one, right? Yeah. You got to learn to walk before you can run. That's right? exactly. So crawling is where we all begin. Yeah. This is your basic manual check. Think of it like going through your credit card statement line by line after the bill has already arrived. You're reacting to the shock rather than preventing it. Yeah, been there. Right. Mm. You're like, oh, I guess I did go to Starbucks every day this month. But with cloud costs, those surprises can be way more expensive than a few lattes. Definitely. And that's where that next level up comes in, the walking stage. Okay, so what are we doing in the walking stage? So you're getting a little more proactive. Proactive, I like it. Yeah, so instead of waiting for that big, scary bill to show up, you're setting up some basic alerts. Oh, okay. Like getting a notification if I go over budget in a certain category. Exactly. You still got to do some digging to figure out what's causing the issue, but at least you're not caught totally off guard. You've got a little heads up. Right, like a friendly reminder from the cloud gods. Exactly. And this is where good metadata comes into play. Metadata. Okay, for those of us who aren't fluent in tech speak, remind us what metadata is again. Yeah, so think of metadata like labels on all your cloud transactions. Okay. So say you see this big spike in storage costs, good metadata would tell you exactly which files are driving that increase. So you can see if it's something important or just a bunch of digital clutter taking up space. Exactly. Maybe it's like you said, old marketing videos you can archive and free up that space and save some money in the process. <laughs> okay. I like it. Okay, so we've crawled, we've walked. Now what about the running stage? This is it, the holy grail of anomaly management. Bring on the holy grail. Yeah. Your systems are so smart, so sophisticated, that they automatically detect those anomalies, analyze what's going on, and even suggest solutions. It's like having a personal finance assistant, yeah. but for your cloud costs. Yeah, exactly. Working behind the scenes 24-7. That's amazing. But let's be real. That level of automation probably takes some serious tech wizardry, right? It does, yeah. But the great thing is, not every organization needs to be at that running stage right away. Remember, it's a journey, not a race. True, true. Like we talked about, even those first crawl steps can make a huge difference in understanding your cloud costs. And then you can start walking and maybe eventually you'll be running too. I love that. So it sounds like this whole cloud cost thing, it's not just a job for the tech team. No. no it's okay. a team effort. Absolutely. Our sources made it clear that it takes a whole cast of characters to manage these costs effectively. It's like a detective movie, right? Everyone's got a role to play. Exactly. So who are the key players in this cloud cost mystery? Well, first up, you've got the FinOps team, the financial operations specialist. Okay, so not just your typical number crunchers then? No, they're more like financial detectives. Ooh, I like that. They're the ones who can connect the dots between what's happening with your cloud usage and how it's impacting your bottom line. So they're speaking both languages. Yeah tech and finance. Exactly. They're like the bridge between those two worlds. I can see why that's super important. Okay. okay. Who else is on the case? Well, then you've got the engineers, of course. The ones who actually build and maintain all these cloud systems, right? Yes. They're the mechanics of our story, making sure everything's running smoothly under the hood. And if there's a cost anomaly, they're the ones who can dive deep into the code 
to find the root cause, right? You got it. They're like the pit crew for your clouds. I love that analogy. So we've got the detectives, we've got the mechanics, but it sounds like the cast doesn't stop there, right? It's like the plot thickens. We've got more suspects on our hands. Right. Our sources mentioned a couple more key players we got to talk about. Okay, yeah, yeah. Later on me. Who else is involved? So we've got the product team, for one. The folks who are actually building the stuff that runs on the cloud. Exactly. They have a huge impact on cloud costs because the way they design and build those products directly affects how much those products end up using those cloud resources. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, so if they're not careful, things could get pricey really fast. Exactly. And then on the other side of that equation, you've got the finance team. Uh, the money people. Got to keep them happy. Right. And they're the ones who are ultimately responsible for making sure the company's staying within budget. Which includes those cloud costs we've been talking about. Absolutely. So they need to be in the loop about what's going on with cloud usage and costs, just like everyone else. It's like a big team bonding experience. Except instead of trust falls, we're chasing down rogue cloud costs. Aha. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. So one thing that really struck me when we were researching this is how important communication is. Oh, 100%. If those teams aren't talking to each other, it's like a recipe for disaster. Right. Because if the engineers don't understand the budget constraints, they might accidentally design something that's super expensive to run, and then the finance teams would be like, um, hello, did anyone think about the cost? Exactly. And then nobody's happy. Exactly. So how do we avoid that whole mess? Clear communication clear documentation. Those are key. It's like if the fine ops team spots an anomaly, they need to be able to clearly explain what's going on to the engineer so the engineers can fix it. And everyone needs to keep the finance team in the loop so there are no surprises come budget time. Right. So it's not enough to just find those anomalies. We've got to be able to explain them in a way that everyone understands so we can actually do something about them. Absolutely. It's like solving a mystery. If the detectives find all the clues, but they can't explain them to anyone else, then it doesn't really matter, does it? That's a good point. So we've talked about detecting the anomalies, but then the real magic happens when we figure out what to do with that information. Yeah, the so what part of the equation. Exactly. It's one thing to know that there's a problem, but then the question is, okay, now what? What do we do about it? Exactly. And that's where those measures of success come in that we saw in the sources. Right. The whole point of all this is to actually make things better. Right. Exactly. It's about taking action and then seeing the positive impact of that action. So what kind of positive impact are we talking about here? Give me the good stuff. Well, for starters, reduce costs. Who doesn't love saving money, right? Music to my ears. Tell me more. And it's not just about catching those errors after they've already happened. Good anomaly management can actually help you prevent overspending in the first place. Okay, so it's like proactive cost savings. Exactly. Like having a financial early warning system in place. I like the sound of that. Right. So instead of getting to the end of the month and realizing you blew your budget on cloud costs, you can catch those potential issues early on and course correct before they become major problems. Okay, so give me a real world example. How does this actually play out? Okay, so let's say you have a cloud service and it's configured in a way that's technically functional, but it's not the most cost effective way to do things. Maybe you're using a premium tier when a standard tier would work just fine. Okay. Good. Anomaly management systems can actually flag those kinds of things early on, saving you a ton of money in the long run. Oh, that's smart. It's like finding those hidden savings that you didn't even know were there. Exactly. And okay. speaking of being proactive, another measure of success that our sources highlighted was faster reaction time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Time is money, as they say. Right. So the sooner you can address an issue, the less likely it is to spiral into a bigger, more expensive problem. Right. Because those cloud costs can add up fast if you're not careful. Exactly. It's much easier to fix a small leak than it is to deal with a full-blown flood in your basement. A thousand percent. Yeah. So we're saving money. We're reacting faster. What else is in this treasure chest of benefits? Well, good anomaly management can also give you a much deeper understanding of your cloud usage in general. Okay. So it's not just about putting out fires. It's about actually understanding how you're using the cloud and making smarter decisions overall. Exactly. It's about moving from a place of guesswork to a place of data-driven insight. Okay, yeah. Data is king these days. Right. And when you have that data, you can make more informed decisions about everything from budgeting and forecasting to product development and innovation. So whether you're laser-focused on profitability, efficiency, or even coming up with the next big thing, 
good data is key. 100%. And our sources were very clear about this. Good data, it's like the foundation for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have accurate and reliable data coming in, your entire anomaly management system, it's built on shaky ground. Right. Garbage in, garbage out, as they say. Exactly. So you want to make sure you're starting with a solid foundation of good data. Okay. That makes sense. This has got me thinking. If good anomaly management relies on good data, what other systems do you think our listeners might have that could benefit from that same level of scrutiny? Hmm, that's a good question. Like even outside of the cloud, are there other areas in your business where you might be relying more on gut feeling than concrete data? Yeah, like maybe it's time to take a closer look at those areas where we've just been kind of winging it. Right. See if we can bring some debt driven insights to those decisions. Exactly. Because who knows? Maybe we'll find some hidden savings there, too. Absolutely. Or even new opportunities. Ooh, yeah. Opportunities. I like the sound of that. Yeah. It's like that saying, you can't manage what you don't measure. So true. So maybe instead of just focusing on what we can cut, we should also be looking for ways to optimize. Exactly. Find those areas where you can get the most bang for your buck. I like it. Okay. So for those listeners who are feeling, a little overwhelmed right now, like, okay, I need to get my cloud costs under control, but where do I even start? What advice would you give them? Well, first of all, don't panic. It's easy to get overwhelmed, but remember, you don't have to do everything at once. Yeah, baby steps, right? Exactly. Start by figuring out where you're at right now. Are you in the crawling stage, the walking stage, or somewhere in between? And our trusty crawl, walk, run framework can help with that, right? Absolutely. Once you know where you stand, then you can start setting some realistic goals. You don't have to go from zero to 60 overnight. Just pick one or two things you can focus on improving and go from there. I love that. It's all about progress, not perfection, right? Exactly. And remember, even small changes can make a big difference over time. So don't be afraid to start small and celebrate those wins along the way. Okay, so we're starting small, we're celebrating our wins. Any other words of wisdom before we wrap things up? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway here is that cloud cost management, it's not a one-time thing. Right, it's not like you set it and forget it. Exactly. It's an ongoing process. It's something you need to be thinking about and revisiting on a regular basis. Yeah, just like those credit card bills we were talking about earlier. Exactly. you got to stay on top of it. I'm sensing a theme here. But hey, on the bright side, at least with cloud costs, you're not racking up any interest charges, right? That's true. That's one less thing to worry about. Okay, that's a win in my book. <sighs> well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today. Hopefully our listeners are walking away feeling empowered and equipped to tackle those cloud costs head on. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, as they say. So true. And speaking of knowledge, don't forget, we've got all those links and resources from our sources available for you on the show notes page. So if you're ready to dive deeper into any of the topics we talked about today, head over there and check it out. We've got you covered. And as always, thanks for joining us on this deep dive adventure. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those cloud costs in check.